This video is going to cover the topic of stem and leaf plots. My page is set up with my horizontal and vertical line. I'm going to put the date and topic at the top. As you can see, our topic is stem and leaf plots. Our essential question today is, what is a stem and leaf plot and how do I make it? Stem and leaf plots are visual representations of data. They let you see very quickly the shape of the distribution of the information, right? So you can see where most of the data lies in a data set. It's called a stem and leaf plot because it looks sort of like the stem of a plant with leaves coming off to the right side. So you can see here I have my stem and my leaf. Mathematically, our stem and leaf plot has numbers on it, right, that represent data. So it looks more like this. The question is, how do we come up with this shape and what do the numbers mean? I have a list here of student names and the time it might take these students to get to school on a typical day. I could make a line plot or a bar graph of this information, but I want to make a stem and leaf plot. So let's see what that would look like. For this data, the stem is going to be the tens digits of all of the numbers in my data. The times go from a uh, shortest time of 8 minutes, right, to the longest time of 60 minutes. So my tens digits need to go from 0, there's no tens digit here, all the way up to 6. My stem will count from 0 to 6. These each represent a group of tens, right? We can have responses in the tens, twenties, forties, sixties. My leaves will represent the ones digits. I only have one number that doesn't have anything in the tens, and that's this 8 over here. I'm going to go ahead and put my 8 on this side to represent 0 tens, 8 ones. That means it took Sophia 8 minutes. I have four numbers right here that are in the tens that have a 1 in their 10 digits, 15, 15, 15, and 19. As I place my leaves with the 1 digit, I need to make sure that those are in numerical order. I have two numbers that are in the 20s, a 22 and a 25, so I'm going to put their ones digits as well. Here's the 2 out of the 22 and the 5 out of the 25. In my 30s, I have a 30 and a 35. For the 30, I'm going to represent that with a 0 in the ones place. The 35 will be represented with a 5 in the ones place. I don't have any numbers in the 40s, and I don't have any numbers in the 50s. I'm going to leave them blank. If I put a zero in there, that would confuse people and think that there was a value 40, right? So I'm just going to leave it completely blank. There is, however, one more number in the 60s, and that is the exactly 60, so I'm going to put a zero in to represent 60. A stem and leaf plot also requires a key so that people know how to read my plot. I'm going to put my key in here. I just took one of my numbers, um, one stem and one leaf, and put them side by side, and told my audience, told my reader what it means, that the 1 on one side across from the 9 means 19. It doesn't mean 190, it doesn't mean 1 and 9 tenth, right? It means 19. There are a couple nice things about having your data in a stem and leaf plot formation, and that is you can really quickly see any outliers, right? You can see this 60 is all by itself. It's not at all near the rest of the data, so that might mean it is an outlier. You can also see where most of the data is clustered. It helps you know how everything is spread out. Here it's really quick to see that the shape right, has a big bump here in the tens and in the teens. So I know that that is where a lot of the information is in my data set. We'll get a chance to practice making stem and leaf plots more in class, um, but this is a good introduction to what a stem plot is or a stem and leaf plot is and how you make it. If anything is confusing, as always, go back, revisit anything um, that you didn't get the first time, and feel free to write down any questions that you might have for us to go over in class.